Many people need help switching from Universal Analytics to GA4. And this is totally understandable. GA4 handles many as aspects differently than UA. So let's compare these two analytics tools. A new data model. It starts with a data model, meaning how GA collects the data. Universal Analytics is known for its layered user session hit model. And it's also logical. The first layer is the user. Technically speaking, it's a browser mark marked by the GA, GA cookie that is set. The second layer is the sessions that each user had. And finally, we have the so-called hits, which represent all the actions on a website, like a page view or a button click. This data model makes total sense once you wrap your head around it. But it can also be tricky to handle if you want to make some deeper analysis or apply machine learning to the raw data. And that's where GA4 comes in. Its data model is event-based and it's completely flat. This means that everything that happens on your website is an event. Even the beginning of a new session or the first visit is a use of a user is an event. That doesn't mean that the concept of sessions or user disappears. Each event has a parameter with, with the session and the user ID. And with those identifiers, you can link each event to a specific session or a single user. Speaking of users, GA4 is close to solving one of the big challenges in modern web analysis and marketing, cross-device tracking. You know, when a user is browsing on multiple devices like the mobile and the laptop. As mentioned, a user ID in Universal Analytics is actually identifying the browser instead of the person behind it. And this is still the default in GA4. But if your website offers a user login, you can use this unique login ID instead of the default user ID. So when a user logs in with two different and two different devices, you will not be counting two users but one exactly as it is. Our tip is therefore to consider a user link for user in for your service. But make sure it adds some value for your customers and users as well. Sessions refined. Not only users are handled differently in GA4, even the definition of a session is refined. In UA, a session would break and a new one would start when the set traffic source changes or the clock strikes midnight. But in GA4, the session would continue in both cases. It's a tricky concept, so let's take a look at an example for the change of traffic source scenario. Imagine you are looking for a new frying pan. If you're like me, you do some research and compare different models on and online shops and prices. So you start googling frying pan and find some interesting results. You then open a few links on different browser tabs and have a look at the web shops A, B and C. You then realize what you actually want is a ceramic frying pan. Back to Google it is. On that new result page, you see a shopping ad promoting exactly the pan you want. You click it and you're back again on webshop B. In Universal Analytics, the owner of webshop B sees two sessions, one from organic and the other one from paid shopping. But in GA4, they see only one session. The first event in that session will be attributed to the organic search. But all other events that follow the ad click will be attributed to paid shopping instead. As for the session break at midnight, even though it seems very irrational to do it, it makes sense once you start to understand how Universal Analytics is actually collecting the data per session. Imagine it's five minutes to midnight and you're browsing a website and have a look at some a few product pages. UA is creating a data row for your session and logs a page, page views in that row. These data rows also have columns defining date of that session. But now you continue browsing after midnight. The session state has changed and Universal Analytics can store two dates in one row. So it has to create a new session. But in GA4, the date is connected to, this, to the events. The session ID stays the same throughout the time of the browsing. Only the date and the events is changing after midnight. To conclude this redefinition of how sessions are counted, if you see fewer sessions in GA4, you are actually looking at the real numbers instead of this inflated session count that Universal Analytics was presenting to you. What happens to my UA metrics? There is another deal breaker for many people switching to GA4. Many metrics they are used to are not there. 
And I do partly agree. For example, there is no unique page view metric, and at the time of we made this video at least. And where the heck is the bounce rate? Well, at least for the bounce rate, you have a worthy replacement, the engagement rate. This is quite the opposite of the bounce rate, but with an interesting twist. You probably know that a universal analytics visit is counted when, as a bounce when a user enters a website and only triggers a single page view and nothing else. In GA4, a session counts as engaged when somebody either visits two pages, has triggered a conversion event, or has the website or the app open in focus more than 10 seconds. Especially that last one is very interesting, and it also explains this new engagement time metric. Back to our frying pan example. Let's assume you only had a quick look at website A. You didn't really like it, but you left the tab open anyways, just in case. In UA, the session duration clock would continue ticking, since you have the website open. But in GA4, it's detecting that the browser window is not active, and it doesn't count the time anymore. Doesn't that make much more sense than the good old session duration? Overall, GS4 is trying to focus more on the things that really matter. Instead of worrying of your bouncers, you should be focusing on those people that actually show some interest in the website. Furthermore, Google Analytics wants you to focus on a user behavior rather than looking on a website's performance from a session perspective. Attribution improved. That brings us to the final topic in this video, the attribution models. Since UA is so session focused, its attribution model comes naturally. The last click model, or to be exact, the last non-direct click model. When you look at the popular source medium report in UA, the last channel in the user's conversion journey gets all the credit for the conversion. All the other channels that have helped acquire the user to make them fill their shopping cart get no credit at all. Seems pretty unfair, right? The event-based data collection model of GA4 allows you to apply any predefined data model with a data-driven attribution model as the default. It's an attribution model that is taking several signets into account. This model is not new to GA4. 360 users could actually enjoy the benefit of it. But only special reports designed for analyzing attribution models show it. GA4, on the other hand, applies the chosen default attribution model to the conversion numbers in all reports. Now you're probably wondering what's so great about this data-driven attribution model. It's not an easy, an uh, easy question to answer, since Google is not obviously not really sharing the exact formula there they apply. But they do let us know that it incorporates the time to conversion, the device type, the number of ad interactions and the order of ad interactions. I have had a look at the differences between the attribution models for all our clients. Still at an early stage, but I will share the first findings in the next video, Machine Learning in Action. The key takeaways. To summarize. Yes, GA4 is really different from UA. And yes, it feels that there are a lot of essential features still missing but we also get a lot of improvements. That is, the change in data model, which is designed for easy analysis and machine learning. The cross-device tracking capabilities by adding a unique user identifier. The refined definitions of a session, which doesn't inflate the numbers. New and refined metrics like the engagement rate. And finally, a better attribution model. Of course, it's so much easier to stick with what you already know. But remember, Universal Analytics will stop collecting data for the free version next summer. So try to keep an open mind when exploring GA4. And I promise you will start loving it as much as I do.